Please stand, and gentlemen, please remove your graduation caps or hats and direct your attention to the stage as St. Thomas University recognizes the arrival of the State of Florida Department of Corrections Color Guard. Please remain standing for the National Anthem and Invocation. The National Anthem will be led by St. Thomas University College of Law student, Ekaterina Cross, who recently became a U.S. citizen and is graduating today. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Please welcome St. Thomas University's Vice President of Mission and Ministry, Reverend Rafael Capo, with the invocation. Good morning. Let us invoke the presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Blessed are you, good and gracious Father, for you have granted us the gift of life, you have sustained us, and you have helped us reach this day of achievements. In your grace, you have given us your divine law and instilled in our hearts a desire for justice tempered by mercy. In pursuit of the knowledge of law, our graduates have long labored 
and now come to the end of their academic journey. We gather this morning to celebrate and to give thanks for these graduates. Thank you for the gifts with which you have blessed them, for the blessing they will be to a world in need of justice and peace. Grant that in a world of division, our graduates might be agents of reconciliation, that in a world of conflict, they might be agents of peace, that in a world of injustice, they might be agents of justice, that in a world of unfairness, they might be agents of equity, that in a world where the voices of so many are drowned out, they might be their advocacy amplify those voices, that in a world in which so many are pushed to the margins, they might, through their work, draw all to the center. And now, Father of mercy, Grant that the friendships they have made may continue, even across the miles and the years, that the lessons they have learned and the wisdom they have gained may not fade, but may only increase. That any anxiety or doubt about the future may be complemented by a boldness of vision and a fearlessness in setting forth in hope, and that in all things, they may testify to that hope in a world in need of their witness as ethical leaders, true servants of your divine law for our global community now more than ever. And we ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord, who lives forever and ever, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Interim Dean of St. Thomas University, Benjamin L. Crump, College of Law, and Emeritus Professor of Law, John Magdusey. Good morning, and welcome to our graduates, their family and friends, our distinguished guests, community members, and alumni who are joining us here today to celebrate the achievements of our graduates. It is our honor to share this day with all of you, and we wish, and we wish to thank you, family, friends, community members, and alumni who are joining us here today to celebrate the achievements of our graduates. Also, I wish to welcome all our friends and family that are joining us on our live video stream as we celebrate the accomplishments of our class of 2023. To begin, I want to acknowledge the members of today's platform party. I would like to recognize President David A. Armstrong, J.D., Father Pat O'Neill, former STU president and one of the founding fathers of our law school, the distinguished members of our board of trustees and board of advisors, the members of the President's Cabinet, and the members of the St. Thomas University faculty. All of you, please stand and be recognized. Please be seated. Thanks to each of you for joining today to help celebrate our class of 2023. And for all of us, please remember after our commencement ceremony, please join us on the Cordero Breezeway at the Benjamin L. Crump College of Law for a graduation after party. It is an honor and a pleasure to say a few words to you, the graduates of the class of 2023. You have spent so many unseen hours of hard work in your studies to reach this point. You came, you saw, perhaps you faltered beneath the load but you stuck with it and now you have conquered. You should rightly be proud of your achievement and your parents and all those who helped you should certainly share in this victory. Of course, now comes the moment of truth. What will you do with this victory? The road of your life lies open before you. You have the tools of the trade to make a good life in a law practice, providing for your family enjoying the finer things in life, and involving yourselves in projects 
that lead to the success of yourselves and others. These are important goals worthy of a good life. You also have the tools of the trade to help make a good life for those whose success will not reward your lives with wealth or power or reputation. These are the poor, the needy, and the marginalized, the folks who are so easy to forget in the hustle bustle of our everyday lives. You have had some experience with this through your pro bono activities and I dare say throughout your lives whenever you reached out a helping hand to help someone in need. But now your lives will change. You will become much busier with the more quote unquote important matters. It will become harder to turn from your projects to listen to a person crying out in need. The measure of your victory depends on using your new profession to accomplish both goals, the goal of providing well for yourselves and your families, and the goal of providing for the poor. Ultimately, we are not the things we gain for ourselves, but rather the people we make of ourselves. Ultimately, we are persons who love. The more we love, the more we are fulfilled. And it is my sincere hope that you will use the tools you learned here to become great lovers. God bless you all on the journeys you're about to take. It is now my pleasure to introduce President David A. Armstrong, J.D., who is finishing his fifth year as president and continuing to make record-breaking progress in programs throughout the university. His innovative spirit has yielded exciting new ventures and has helped expand the university's regional and national footprint towards what will one day become, will make us the leading Catholic university in the South. While the president has significant experience in enrollment, fundraising, student life and athletics, we are especially blessed by the fact that he holds a JD degree and so understands what it takes to build excellence in a law school. He has enabled the College of Law to pursue its mandate under the encyclical Ex Cordiae Ecclesiae to build a faculty that is truly devoted to the Catholic mission to promote the dignity of human life, justice for all, the quality of personal and family life, the protection of nature, and the search for peace and political stability with special attention to the poor and marginalized. As Ex Corde states, a Catholic university must have the courage to speak uncomfortable truths which do not please public opinion, but which are necessary to safeguard the authentic good of society. President Armstrong's aim for our university is to promote academic discussion and debate at the highest level of excellence in a balanced atmosphere that seeks truth while maintaining respect for all persons. This aim is certainly one that we all can wisely make our own as we venture forth as attorneys to do justice in this world. Please welcome President David A. Armstrong. Thank you, Dean Mackesy. It means a lot to all those words coming from Dean Mackesy because he was my property professor in 1987 at Cleveland State University and Cleveland Marshall College of Law. So I have great respect for Dean. Thank you, and thank you for coming back as an interim dean. Welcome to all of you for our St. Thomas University Benjamin L. Crump College of Law commencement. I want to specifically also welcome Paul Garcia, one of our trustees, all our faculty and staff, all the families, of course all our students, Father Pat O'Neill, former president and found one of the founders of the College of Law, Board of Advisor Herman Rusamano, alumni Ricky Patel and Judge Tarlika Nunez Navarro, who also together, they're friends, but they also authored a wonderful children's book recently. And I want to thank uh, Frank and Annie Casada for being our special guest today, and I can't wait to hear their words. And I want to welcome uh, Wendy McSweeney. I think Wendy's here somewhere. Wendy, where are you at? There she is. The, uh, I call her the queen of diversity and equity and inclusion from Truist Bank. Uh, she was responsible for our first 
foray in, uh, foray in uh, relationship with Ben Crump with our Center for Social Justice. And so please give Wendy a big round of applause. We were hoping that Ben was going to be here today, but he sends his regards. Uh, being the top lawyer in the country, you're always going to be pulled in different directions. Um, but I know that we will see him soon. And I'm not sure if uh, this guest has arrived, but I hope he has. Uh, Jameis Winston, quarterback of the New Orleans Saints. Is Jameis here today? I don't know. I thought so. There he is. Okay. All right. Thanks, Jameis, for being here. Obviously a big-time quarterback, but more importantly, he's friends with our graduate today, Joseph Hernandez. So this is a very special day for you, but it's also a special day for others. And so I would ask everyone to please respect the decorum of the day and support each other as we go through the ceremony. I would like to take this moment to honor our retired and active military, our first responders, law enforcement, and this is Nurses Week. If you can all please stand. Anyone that I just mentioned, please stand. Let's give them a big round of applause. We honor these people because they have done what a lot of people are struggling in today's world to do, which is to think about something more than self, putting others first. And so again, thank you for your service and all that you do for all of us. Okay, now let's start talking about our graduating class. Here's some good intel about our graduating class. We have 257 total graduates from the College of Law today. I feel like there should be some theme music from Aretha Franklin or someone when I say the next thing here. Percent of total graduates who are female, 65%. And probably what makes South Florida, Miami, and St. Thomas University so special. 82% of our students in the College of Law are students of color. Your average age as a class, 29. Honors conferred today in all the three different programs at the College of Law, there are 90 degrees that have the honors distinction. Give them a big round of applause. But I'd like to highlight a couple of our wonderful students today that are graduating and that we aren't going to be missing for sure. Have to start out with Casey Amaya, member of the graduating class of 2023. Casey served as this year's student body president, leaving her mark by devoting her time and efforts to better serve her peers. Casey's efforts to enhance and diversify the student life experience include her actions of co-founding the Fashion Law Society, lobbying for and fundraising funds to take our students up to the Florida Supreme Court and the United States Supreme Court. She is a first-generation college student and first-generation law graduate. She attributes her life success to her, success to her parents who risked and left everything behind to flourish in this country. Casey was six years old when she mi uh, migrated to Cuba, uh, from Cuba with her mother in 2005 to join her father here in the US. Today, Casey is graduating magna cum laude at the top 10% of her class. Yes. With two certifications in real estate law and admiralty law, admiralty and maritime law. And she's re I, I can't read off all the things that she's won over the years here, but a couple of those uh, accolades are the Student of the Year Award, SBA President Award, and many others. 
And Casey had the honor to be selected as one of 47 students in the nation to receive the competitive and coveted Jack Kent Cook Scholarship. As a result, Casey graduates today with her law degree debt-free. I'd like to talk about Angelica B. Knight. She is a Miami native who grew up in Liberty City neighborhood, and she graduated from very close by Miami Carroll City Senior High School. Obtained her bachelor's and decided to attend law school. While working full time, guiding and assisting her wonderful son through virtual school during COVID-19 pandemic, and simultaneously completing a master's degree in public administration, Angelica thought she should go to the law school. <laughs> After the, the pandemic, Angelica in, immersed herself more into the law school, went on to serve as the president of the Black Law Student Association, vice justice of Phi Alpha Delta Law Fraternity, honor council representative for the Student Bar Association, second vice president of the Peter Palermo Mentorship Program and volunteered with the VITA Program, our Volunteer in Income Tax Assistance Program, which serves our local community by preparing their taxes free of charge. Angelica has accepted a postgraduate position at Weiss, Sarota, Helfman, Cole, and Bierman, and has also been accepted to the University of Miami's LLM in taxation, where she is slated to begin this fall. Being a single parent while working full-time, attending law school full-time, yet continuing to earn exemplary grades, Angelica exemplifies hard work, dedication, and resilience. <laughs> Krishna Patel is a first-generation college student, daughter of immigrant parents, and she had a non-traditional journey to law school. Like me, growing up as a first-generation college student, she had very little contact with people who attended law school or were lawyers. She started her law career at Florida, Gulf, uh, Florida Coastal. And soon after starting, that college of law was shut down. And I want to thank all our faculty and our administration that worked hard right away. We were called right away, can we help and handle some of their students? And our faculty and our administration stepped up, and we brought those students here, and Krishna is one of those. Leo Farias, this one really got to me. Ten years ago at night, he would go to the ATM machine of a local bank to use the lights in the bank lobby to read his textbooks. People would walk in and out and look at him as if he was trashed, but he made a promise to himself to make it. He dreamt of going to real estate school, and after he was licensed, he slowly put himself through college and attained a bachelor's degree. With the support of Leo's husband and the words of his mother, my mother always told me it's not about what we have, but what we do with it. Now that I have this education, I will do amazing things with it. Great job, Leo. <laughs> Story of Jerry Williams III who as an African-American male student, who as an African-American -Amer male student is rare at a college of law and in the practice of law. And that's one of the pillars of our Center for Social Justice, the Ben Crump Center for Social Justice, is to support students like Jerry. And after undergrad, he had his doubts about coming to law school for several years. But once he came to STU, he got the support that he received and felt welcome, and now is sitting amongst you today. And lastly, Max Tobiana and Sarah Lefevre, now Tobiana. Sarah and Max are both graduating this May, today. Uh, they met at STU Law's Zoom orientation three years ago, and then met in person at the first day of law school. They were in the same section. They got married in June 22, and they will both graduate today and pursue, both of them, an LLM in tax at Northwestern Law.
Those are just a few of the great stories of all of you sitting in front of us today. And we honor all of you. But you honor us by living St. Thomas University's mission. St. Thomas University is an archdiocesan Catholic university with rich cultural and international diversity, committed to the academic and professional success of its students who go on to become ethical leaders in the global community. That is more important now than ever. So I, we're, you're going to get some great advice today from our speakers, but I do have three pieces of advice for you. Number one, I have a secret. I spend the majority of my time with leaders of politics, education, business, and they all, especially post-COVID, have said the same thing. And I'm telling you, over and over and over again. They don't have enough people in their organizations that are willing to work hard, willing to put the time in, willing to have the grit and perseverance to overcome any obstacles and adversity. What I love most about being the president of St. Thomas University, when I go out to the law firms and go to the legal events and I talk to people who hire our graduates, what is so awesome is they always say the same thing. I love STU law graduates because they're my hardest workers in my firm. They're the ones that get the job done. You now hold that mantle. Make sure you continue that tradition and even exceed it in the future. This is our first time where we're doing an STU commencement week. We've separated all our uh, ceremonies so that everyone can get the full experience and have a full party and we don't have to push anybody along. So today's the last day of those three straight ceremonies that we've had. I usually don't write my remarks until one or two in the morning before the first uh, ceremony. And usually because I'm waiting for some inspiration. Or, as the Sisters of Notre Dame would say when I worked at Notre Dame College in Cleveland, uh, that God is a good God, God is a gracious God, but God is a providential God. And so as providence, as I was thinking and kind of had a, a lull, I turned on the television and the Sully movie was on. If anyone has ever seen that, it's about Captain Sullenberger, who was a military pilot and then became a, a, a consumer pilot and uh, had a bird strike as he was leaving LaGuardia to go to Charlotte and had to land the plane, crash land in the Hudson River with what he says, 155 souls on board and everyone survived on January 15th of 2009. And as I was watching that movie, I thought, wow, will we be able to answer the call when something happens, when something big happens in this world? or in our lives, or at our firm, or with our family? Will we be able to answer the call? I believe what your faculty did with you here, I believe what your families have done and the work that you've done, that you are prepared for those big moments and to step up and represent who you are, your family, and St. Thomas University as an ethical leader for the global community to solve those big issues. Yes, it's worth an applause. And lastly, our undergrad musical theater program put on Godspell for their uh, spring uh, performance. And Carlos Diaz, our VP for uh, marketing, attended it, and he was completely inspired by one of our students, Adrian Lopez, who sang the song, Build a Beautiful City. Yes, we can. So much so that we brought Adrian in on Monday for our uh, steward, General Assembly, that's our employees, all our employees, staff, and faculty, and he sang that song. And it talks about how we can build a beautiful city here on earth in anticipation of the most beautiful city in heaven. And it keeps on saying, yes, we can. Well, I want to personally thank all of you, faculty, staff, administration, parents, families, friends, but especially you, the students, for helping us build that beautiful city here at St. Thomas University. 
And I know that you are prepared to go out and build that beautiful city locally, regionally, in this country and in this world. I am so proud of you. Thank you so much. God bless all of you. Go Bobcats. I would at this time like to introduce this year's Juris Doctorate graduation speaker, Susi Jimenez. <laughs> Susie is a first-generation law student from Uruguay. She graduated from the University of Florida with a Bachelor of Science in Psychology and a Bachelor of Arts in Criminology. Ms. Jimenez went on to obtain a Master of Science degree in Criminal Justice from FIU. Ms. Jimenez started law school at St. Thomas University College of Law in August of 2020. During her three years in law school, she earned eight Cali Book Awards joined the Intercultural Human Rights Law Review and trial team. She acted as treasurer for Lambda Law Society, volunteered for Catholic Charities Legal Services, and participated in the law school's immigration clinic. Following graduation, she will be working for adjunct professor Linda Osberg Braun at her immigration law firm. Ms. Jimenez is the mother of two beautiful girls Layla and Luna. And girls, today, mom is a St. Thomas University College of Law graduate. Please help me welcome Susie Jimenez. Dear esteemed faculty, fellow graduates, families, and friends, I am deeply humbled and honored to be speaking to the incredible class of 2023. Today marks a significant milestone for all of us. It is a culmination of years of hard work, unwavering perseverance, and unyielding dedication. As we celebrate our success, it is also important to reflect on the obstacles that made us reach this point. So allow me to tell you a little bit about my own journey. Like many of us here, I was not exactly your traditional law student. I started law school as an immigrant, a first-generation college student, and a married mother of a two-year-old little girl. As a result, I was full of doubts and fears about the journey that lay ahead. But failure was simply not an option. So I threw myself entirely into that first semester and my hard work paid off. I finished at the top of my class, I made some amazing friends, and I felt confident that I was finally on the right track. Then the unexpected happened. My mom became very ill, and I had to drop almost all of my classes to be by her side in her final days. I had no idea how to continue after this. I had lost my biggest supporter, and I was basically an entire semester behind. But with the help of my family and my friends, I found my strength. I reminded myself of how far I'd already gotten, and I kept going. I took classes in the summer to make up for the ones I had dropped, and I even managed to get an internship. Then the unexpected happened again. I found out I was pregnant in law school, not exactly part of the plan. The idea of balancing a baby in law school seemed impossible. But I was blessed with the incredible support from my family, my husband, my friends, and from the law school faculty. They all made me believe that I could do this. And I did. I kept going to school, I joined the Intercultural Human Rights Law Review, and I became treasurer of Lambda. It was here, and I also joined trial team. It was at trial team among this group of remarkable advocates that I truly found my confidence. And it was here that I learned the best motto ever, excellence demands consistency, <laughs> a principle that will guide me for the rest of my life. I got through a grueling final season and somehow managed to stay at the top of my class. On Valentine's Day, I had a beautiful, healthy baby girl 
and I received an outpouring of love from everyone here at STU. A week later, I was back at school, juggling the responsibilities of a newborn, a three-year-old, and being a law student. In my final year, I joined the immigration clinic. It was in the clinic that I truly became an advocate, and I got my full circle moment when I realized that I had now gone from being an immigrant myself to being the person representing them. The moral of the story is this. Life does not always go according to plan. But like all of us here today, despite the challenges that were thrown at me, I refuse to let anything get in the way of my success. My journey through law school has been quite unique, but I think in all of our journeys, there's something in common. There's a person who refused to give up, who realized that they're capable of so much more than they ever thought possible, and who decided to overcome all obstacles that stood in front of them. And for that, I congratulate each and every one of you. And I cannot wait to see all the amazing things you all achieve. We made it. Congratulations to the class of 2023. Good morning, definitely a tough act to follow. My name is Lourdes Fernandez and I am the Assistant Dean for the Office for Career Development. And it is my pleasure to present the Outstanding Public Service Award to a graduate who has completed almost 1,100 hours of legal pro bono with the NAACP Florida State Conferences and St. Thomas Law's Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. Please join me this morning in recognizing as the Class of 2023's recipient of the Outstanding Public Service Award, Miss Angelica B. Knight. Thank you, and wonderful work, Angelica. Now I would like to introduce the, our commencement speaker, Frank C. Casada, as well as his wife, Anna Casada, who will be administering the Pledge of Loyalty later in the program. Both Annie and Frank are STU law alumni. Frank Casada is a co-founder of the MSP Recovery and has served as the chief legal officer since its inception. With more than 15 years of healthcare and complex commercial litigation experience, Frank oversees MSP's in-house attorneys and several nationally recognized law firms that assist MSP recovery in its recovery efforts. Throughout his career, Frank has represented companies in a variety of complex commercial litigation cases and trials in both state and federal courts. Notably, Frank served the residents of Coral Gables as an elected city commissioner and vice mayor from 2011 to 2019. Currently, he is a director of the USA Water Polo, a sport we hope to bring soon to St. Thomas. As an STU law student, Frank was a law clerk with chief judge of the Third D District Court of Appeal, Juan Ramirez, Jr., and with the Honorable Ronald Dresnick of the 11th Judicial Circuit. Anna de la Rosa Quesada currently focuses in the area of mass tort litigation. Annie is involved in seeking justice and compensation for victims of toxic exposures, faulty products, and drugs. Prior, drugs. Prior to being in private practice, Annie served as general counsel and director of compliance for the Imperial Freight Brokers. Please help me welcome your commencement speaker, Frank Quesada.
Thank you, Dean. Good morning, morning. ladies and gentlemen, esteemed faculty, honored guests, and most importantly, class of 2023, congratulations. With my wife sitting by my side and my children in the crowd, uh, it is a tremendous privilege and honor to stand before you today as a fellow alumnus and to share in your excitement and to offer some words of encouragement as you embark on your next journey. So picture this, six months from me sitting in those same seats, I've worked my way onto the trial team at my law firm, Fowler Rodriguez. The firm is representing a plaintiff, Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines. We have sued Rolls-Royce for manufacturing engines for several cruise ships. Those engines are supposed to last 25 years, yet they're breaking down every six to eight months, leaving thousands of passengers stranded on board. Continue to imagine, six months from this day, I am in a city I cannot pronounce, I'm in a country I never thought I would go to, and I am freezing. I am in Hogesund, Norway, where all the IKEA furniture is made. I am sitting at the house of one of the important witnesses in our case, the senior superintendent for Royal Caribbean, Newt Skysville. I could barely pronounce the guy's name. I had been there for a week. I had been prepping him. His trial testimony was the very next day. we are taking a deposition to, pres to preserve his testimony the following day in Norway. Opposing counsel is in town. Court reporters have been flown in from London. I have been practicing law for six months. I have been barred for about three. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> All of a sudden, a good thing happens, but it freaked me out. Newt Skysville pulls out 10 boxes of documents from different records custodians in different formats in different languages, but they're all amazing documents for our case. I didn't have enough time to review everything. I couldn't translate everything. The testimony is the following day. I haven't shown it to opposing counsel. I didn't know it existed. So what do I do? I freaked out. I walked outside. It's snowing. It's freezing. I'm staring at a frozen lake. I'm a, I'm a Cuban boy from Miami. I hate the snow. I hate the cold. I'm six foot seven. I, don't, I, I didn't bring the right clothes. Nothing fits me. It's freezing. I'm standing outside. And I call two people. The first person I call was my evidence professor at St. Thomas, Judge Ronald Dresnick. I didn't do so great in his class. And all of a sudden, in the most important case of my life, again, practicing for about six months, and I have all this information. I start asking him questions. He calms me down. He teaches me a few tricks. He reminds me uh, to look at my study outlines from finals, and there were a few tips in there. Yes, I still had them. Hold on to those. You will refer back to them. I guarantee it. Calms me down a little bit. And from there, I decide I got to call someone from my study group. Who I call my girlfriend at the time, Anna. <laughs> I call her up. I'm still freaking out a little bit. And she's a little bit more direct with me. She says, suck it up. Don't sleep. Get it done. Uh, <laughs> And I'll have you know, she's still that direct with me today. <laughs> My point is, lean on each other and lean into every difficult situation. You heard President Armstrong just say it now. You heard Susie say it in her speech as well. You have to be hungry for the challenges that are going to be put in front of you. Be the first one to say yes to a new assignment. Go the extra mile. Go around the world. Be hungry to succeed and continue to build on your resiliency. You're gonna have extreme highs, you're gonna have extreme lows. Whether you go into litigation, corporate, transactional, immigration, or you go into another way that you're gonna use your law degree outside of the traditional practice of law. Think about the skills that you have learned here. Think about how you crammed two nights ago for the, for the last final you had yesterday. Think about those moments. Because some honest truths about practicing law, it's a lot like law school. 
I'll give you three examples. The early mornings and the late nights of cramming do not end. I was up at 4 o'clock this morning because I had to get some documents filed before coming here today. Fortunately, it doesn't end. Embrace it. Look forward to it. Enjoy the process. In fact, the pressure only increases because you're going to want to win that trial. You're going to want to impress that client. You're going to want to close that deal. That cramming never ends. Every situation is unique. It's not like torts class. It's not like criminal procedure where you have a nice little packaged situation. Oh, this is a tort. Oh, this is a breach of contract. It doesn't work like that. You have a tort mixed with a contract, with a family law issue, with an immigration issue, all mixed into one. Those clean hypotheticals unfortunately don't exist in the real world of practicing law. Lastly, the studying doesn't end here. With chat GPT and the artificial intelligence that I'm sure you're all familiar with, you see it in the law practice and you see the specialization of law. Yes, you want to go into litigation. You want to be a commercial litigator. What does that mean? You want to be an admiralty, you go into tax law, you go into criminal law, and there's subspecialties within that. Take me, for example. When I came to St. Thomas, I was in the summer conditional program. I did not get into St. Thomas. I had to fight to get into St. Thomas through the summer conditional program. I was fortunate enough to get in, so if you're part of summer conditional program, some of the most successful attorneys I know went through the summer conditional program. The additional struggles, the resilience you need to have, it's an important aspect. So when I came to St. Thomas, I thought I was going to be a real estate transactional attorney. Title work, closings, that was my plan. I came, became a certified legal intern, worked at the state attorney's office, clerked for a few judges, I was on the mock trial team with uh, Professor Rusamano as my teacher. And from there, I decided to get into trial work because I loved it so much. I wasn't expecting that journey. As you heard, I served as a politician for just shy of a decade. I created a data analytics company, and I've now argued about 15 cases in the federal appellate courts. I've negotiated with the Department of Justice, and I've been all over the world practicing law. A little bit different from the title work that I thought I was going to get into when I first applied to law school. So despite not exactly knowing where your path is going to take you, it's good news. One of the greatest assets that you will take with you from St. Thomas are the relationships. There's a big pro to graduating from a small school, the community that you have. Almost every week I am reaching out and speaking to alumni from my class in different classes and we help each other out, even if it's the first time we've met or even if it was just a passing glance that we had in the breezeway. That steadfast support network, no matter how far your study group is from you physically, you all will remain close. Lean on each other. Help each other out. You will have different specialties that you're involved in. You're going to be able to help each other out through your career. In closing, remember the lessons you have learned and the friendships you've formed. Carry that hunger to succeed, that resilience to fight through those difficult situations, no matter how deep in a trench you think you are. There's success right around that corner. Your determination and hard work have brought you to this point. Your determination and hard work are going to get you through the bar exam. They will continue to propel you forward as you make your mark on the world. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. You have much to be proud of and even more to look forward to. Go forth, conquer with the spirit and tenacity that you have cultivated here at St. Thomas. We're rooting for you. We are your allies. We can't wait to see the incredible things you do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Frank. And I'd also like to invite up yourself and attorney Anna Casada to Casada to join us um, here as well. Today, each one will be receiving an honorary degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa.
So now, finally, comes the time we've all been waiting for. The awarding of the degrees. Degrees will be awarded in the order of Doctor of Laws, Master of Laws, and then Juris Doctor degrees. Candidates will be presented to the president of the university for the awarding of their degrees. I ask members of the audience to respect others while taking photographs during the ceremony. We will begin by recognizing the candidates for the Doctor of Laws in Intercultural Human Rights, the Master of Laws in Intercultural Human Rights, and the Master of Laws in Cybersecurity Law and Policy. With the candidates for the Doctor of Laws and the Master of Laws in Intercultural and Human Rights degree and Cybersecurity Law and Policy, please come forward. Tamara Dawes, JSD. Mona Abdul Aziz Al Maham, JSD. Alayinka W. Reese, JSD. Ella Lim in Intercultural Human Rights, Sabrina Dolores Aguero, cum laude. LLM in Intercultural Human Rights, Gadir Alohari. Jean R. Arisma, cum laude. Sarah Asiri. Vanessa Arnell Villanueva Baptista LLM. Francisco Jose Barro Pardo. Omar Isidro Cruz Martinez. Yolanda Del Carmen Diaz.
Elaine A. Hernandez, cum laude. Gabrielle Cuera. Safoni Levy. Ilima Teresita Tomei. Sherline Govobi Valentin. Maria Villar Zamora. Ben J.C. Wynn. Jimmy Beth Zamora. Roberto Isari, summa cum laude, Masters of Law in Cybersecurity. <laughs> Philip D. Veloso, magna cum laude, Masters of Law in Cybersecurity. We will now recognize the candidates for the Juris Doctor degree. Would the candidates for the Juris Doctor degree please come forward? Carla Maria Alberte Gonzalez, cum laude. Somaris Alcantara. Francesca Alfonso. Maisiel Alonso, cum laude. David A. Alvarez. Jose W. Alvarez. Emmy Amaro. Casey Amaya, magna cum laude. Allison Andrea Andrade, cum laude. Daniela Andijar. Marcos Aguirre. Carla V. Aponte.
Lady Arakaza. Leonay C. Arnold. Carly Marie Anastados Fabian. Karina Babinko. Crystal Barranco Garcia. Renata M. Barroso Sanchez. Erica Alicia Baston. Nicole Ann Bondini. Antonio Bayuello. Dona Pucci Bayburn. Simon Barus Benajad. Alexis Victoria Betancourt. Edward L. Blair IV. Bridget Chelsea Bodu. Andreas Enrique Baroto. Cassandra Busi. Mary Lou Brett Hauer. Joselito Burgos. Caleb Ryan Kuban. Christopher Cabrera. Felipe Cabrera. Christiane Rosa Cabrera. Marina J. Cage, cum laude. Daniela Cardenas Capote, cum laude. Cody James Cartendale. Daniele's El Cardoso Cervantes, summa cum laude. Lily Carmona. <laughs> Sophia Carrasco. Got it. Got it. 
Gladys Gargalik Degras Mayor. <laughs> Alexia Tatiana Carrion. Nicholas Joseph Cassion III. Alexander D. Castellanos. Daniel Castilla, cum laude. Emily Chahidi, cum laude. Amanda D. Chiapetta. Claire Zinn Churchill. Giovanni Frank Sid. Giovanni C. Centron. Zachary Michael Cohen, summa cum laude. Taylor Congli Conglianton. Quincy Coolidge. Sarah L. Cortez. William Cassio, cum laude. Leah Crespi. Christine Criswell. James P. Crowley. Amanda Cruz. Vanessa Cuellar. Ottavio Bonato Cuna. Daniela Carolina Cuell. Anna Maria Cusacorva. Ellie Demus Cum Laude. Nicole Daly. Julia De Gonzalez. Jada Deal. Ekaterina Cross. Kaylee Elizabeth Deckard, magna cum laude. Christopher Robert Diaz, cum laude. D. 
Danielle Marie Diaz. Natalie Diaz. Brianne Taylor Doucette. Lindsay Vincent Dunkley, cum laude. Douglas Duggan. Chelsea Nicolette Emmanuel. Chelsea. Joseph Lat Lopicolo Enders, magna cum laude. Tiffany Escobar. Leo Anthony Ferris. Amanda D. Fernandez Gonzalez. Nathan Daniel Fernandez. Alejandro Flores Jr. Maria Fernandez Flores Parada, cum laude. Catherine Jane Fowler, cum laude. Rachel Fox. Yohei Fujita. Giovanni Garcia. Lily K. Tahera. Tylee Garcia. Natalie Godoy. Tyler A. Goldman. Austin Gomez, cum laude. Kevin Gomez. Daniel Gonzalez. Christopher Gonzalez. Miguel A. Granda. Kevin Griffiths, magna cum laude. Gladys E. Gar Garudado, cum laude. Ashley Guerrera, cum laude. Danielle Marie Guerrero. Liz Sari Guinan. <laughs> J 
Johan S. Gutierrez. Roger C. Hammer the second. Pamela Hagubero Gaviria. Cassidy M. Heitman Kulade. Elizabeth Hernandez Cum Laude. Joseph M. Hernandez. Eric Vincent Hernandez. William Frederick Kaufman. Brittany Hoskins. Mariella Estrella Hunt, cum laude. Lauren Ibrahim. George A. Esquerdo, magna cum laude. Miligros Hula Sol Solovan, magna cum laude. Christopher A. Juliao. Angelica B. Knight. Megan R. Korovic, magna cum laude. Ashley Michelle Lago. Christina Lavchuk. Robert A. Lawler. Magna cum laude. Sean F. Linehan. Monica Levine, cum laude. Elizabeth D. Leva Fernandez. Carlos Lenore Sanchez. Marcos G. Lobel, magna cum laude. Farida Lufti, cum laude. Isaac Maldonado. Laura Maria Marino, cum laude. Claudia Martinez, cum laude. Gabriela Matos, cum laude.
Stephanie Muttick. Alexander Daniel Maza. Andy Medina. Cum laude. Maria P. Mendoza. Irina Coleman, summa cum laude. Rachel Amanda Marino, cum laude. Ashley R. Morgan. Sandra Felisa Navarrete. Stephanie Nazario Cum Laude. Katarina Neira. Leona J. Noah, magna cum laude. Daniela Nozal Lands, cum laude. Elsie Marie Nuevo, cum laude. Niyama Oba, summa cum laude. I remember you. Marion Obergam, magna cum laude. Andrea M. Otero. Julia Marie Otero. Daniela Cynthia Pachon, magna cum laude. Renee Padron. Jessica Michelle Paglieri, cum laude. Karishna Karan Patel. Luce Miriam Pedraza, cum laude. Genesis M. Perez Medina. Christy Perez. Maria Lucia Perez. Miguel A. Perez. Victoria Pineda, magna cum laude. Anna Gabriela Pulido. Dylan Pulinano. B. 
Bianca Carolyn Perry. Omar Prasad. Monique Marie Pouyes. Anisha Ali Ramjotin. Ray R. Rescon, cum laude. Ashley Cree Reese. Daisha Tamara Reed. Claudia Reeves Gonzalez. Maria Carly Reyes, cum laude. Dominique Ritchie, cum laude. Naomi M. Rivera, magna cum laude. Paola Rivera Lopez, cum laude. Scarlett Riviere, cum laude. Glory Sabrina Robinson, cum laude. Barbara E. Rodriguez. Gaya Isabel Rodriguez, cum laude. Paul A. Rodriguez Mion. Zenaida Teresa Rodriguez. Landy Rojas. Nelsis Giselle Rojas. Sharon Rosenswag, cum laude. Angelo Inrubiano Villami. Pedro St. Ruiz. Danielle Isabel Salinas. Anna M. Sanchez. Daniela Sanchez. Jesus Santiago. (laughs) 
Lucia Stadamachia. Paul D. Schwing. Maria Sarah. Dong Su Shin. Shauna Sharpit Knight. Connor Donahue Sloan. Gypsy Sosa Valles. Elizabeth A. Spiegel. Danny Lee Spiker Jr. Brianna Marie Stringfield Cum Laude. Joseph R. Suarez. Carrie Don Typen. Bianca Christine Derville. Max David Tubana, cum laude. Sarah M. Tubiana, cum laude. Catherine Victoria Toyos. Andrew K. Tuma Waku, cum laude. Ashley Chantel Turner. Anthony J. Underwood. Solomon Valadares. Daisy Vega Mendez, cum laude. Priscilla Velez, cum laude. Odalise Villa. Laura N. Villar. Ryan J. Waterhouse. Elon R. Welshler, magna cum laude. Jerry Williams III. Karen Patricia Zapata. Manuel S. Zuniga. Susie V. Jimenez, summa cum laude.
I ask, I ask all the candidates for the Doctor of Laws in Intercultural Human Rights, Master of Laws in Intercultural Human Rights, and Juris Doctor Degree recipients to please stand. Now we still have one more step, one more step. <laughs> President Armstrong, the faculty of St. Thomas University, Benjamin L. Crump College of Law, recommends these candidates for the Doctor of Laws, Master of Laws, and Juris Doctor degrees. All right, hold on everyone. If I could please get some silence, this is the most important part. By the authority vested in me, as President of St. Thomas University by the Board of Trustees and by the State of Florida, I hereby declare you to be graduates of St. Thomas University Benjamin L. Crump College of Law with all the rights and privileges of the degree of Doctors of Law, Masters of Law, and Juris Doctor as listed on the official records of the university. Congratulations, Class of 2023! Okay, students, students, please remain standing. Students, please remain standing and help me welcome fellow alum Annie Casada to the podium to lead you in the St. Thomas University Pledge of Loyalty, followed by the singing of the alma mater. Good morning, parents, spouses, families, guardians, and friends. I present to you the graduating class of 2023. <laughs> Loyalty to your alma mater, St. Thomas University, is a special characteristic of our students. I ask the platform party to stand and join us and our graduates of St. Thomas University to recite the Pledge of Loyalty on the screen. Students. Please repeat each line after me. Not really students, but now graduates. With a solemn sense of my responsibility, I pledge myself to hold my degree as a sacred trust. An emblem of my obligation to serve. To hold it with untarnished honor to myself. In generous loyalty of St. Thomas University, and with fidelity to God, my country, and my fellows. Now please join us in singing the St. Thomas University alma mater led by Ekaterina Cross. The words of the alma mater can be found in your program and on the screen. Stand like beacons on our 
Class of 2023, please be seated. I ask that you each turn your attention to the screen for a congratulatory message from His Most Reverend Excellency, Archbishop Thomas Wensky. Congratulations, graduates of 2023 at St. Thomas University, our Archdiocesan Catholic University. As Catholics, we believe in both the value and power of faith and the value and power of reason. Pope St. John Paul II said, faith and reason are like two wings on which the human spirit rises to the contemplation of truth. And God has placed in the human heart a desire to know the truth and a word to know himself, so that by knowing and loving God, men and women may also come to the fullness of truth about themselves. This coming to the fullness of truth about God and ourselves is really a great description of what an academic pursuit that aspires to call itself higher education should be about. In a time when people are tempted to think that it's all about me, an education and the Catholic tradition reminds us that the path to self-realization and true happiness is not found through self-seeking, but through self-giving. The purpose of an education is not for us to get more, but to help us be more. And as you leave St. Thomas University today with your diplomas, keep that in mind and make a difference in this community by being the persons that God has created you to be and help renew the face of our earth. Thank you and congratulations again. Twenty twenty three graduates and guests, now some brief directions. Following our benediction, we ask for we ask all guests to please remain seated until the platform party, faculty, and graduates have left the commencement area. When you exit, please follow the directions to the Cordero Breezeway at St. Thomas University, Benjamin L. Crump College of Law, where your faculty, guests, and others will join you for a celebration in your honor. I now invite the Reverend Raphael Capo to come to the podium to lead us in the benediction. Please stand. And now let us ask the Lord to send his blessings upon the class of 2023. Gracious and loving God, we ask now for your almighty hand to be upon our graduates as they and their families celebrate this grand milestone. May they find comfort from our community's continued embrace and support as they journey through life. May they find strength in the excellence of their academic preparation as ethical leaders for our global community, as attorneys in the spirit of the St. Thomas More, patron saint of lawyers and statesmen of absolute integrity. Bless their lives from this day on with goodness and success, with the same charity of St. Thomas of Villanova. Enable them to stay true to their dreams for your greater glory, to discern what is right, good, and just, and to use their gifts wisely and in service to others. Empower them to walk into the future with faith, hope, and great love, guided by your light, so that they may use their talents to, in the words of the saints, go forth and set the world on fire. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>